Welcome to another episode of Slave Sermon. How much of a role does superstition play in our lives? How do we react to things we perceive as being superstitious? Do we believe that bad things will happen to us on Friday the 13th, during a solar eclipse, upon the breaking of a mirror, or when a black cat crosses our path? And what about superstition that is supposed to bring us good luck, like ladybugs, rabbit's feet, horseshoes, or rainbows? How are superstition, magic, and religion intertwined? Before religion, humans believed that natural occurrences such as droughts, earthquakes, and hurricanes could be controlled using magic. But when magic proved to be ineffectual, humans relegated their ideas to something deliberate behind such phenomenon and invented personified deities to manipulate the elements. These beliefs ultimately gave birth to religion. Behaviorist and social philosopher B.F. Skinner experimented with the behavior of pigeons and found the pigeons' actions were developed around patterns linked to what apparently appeared to be superstition. Skinner set up devices that randomly issued food. Whatever behavior the pigeons were engaged in at the time the food was issued was repeated by the pigeons. The pigeons began to associate their specific rituals with the issuance of food. This behavior is not only exclusive to pigeons, but humans as well. And we're going to try another pigeon now, and uh, I will try to pick out some particular pattern of behavior and uh, make it uh, more f a more frequent part of the repertoire of the bird. More than that. There we go, all the way around. We perceive our prayers and religious rituals as being responsible for our blessings. We interact with our self-created super beings in a similar manner as we do with superstition and magic. I took the prayer cloth late at night and I taped it to my chest before I went to bed. Religion is presented to the masses as a magic lantern and inside this lantern is a kind, all-inclusive and loving genie that will appear and grant us all of our wishes. All we have to do is keep rubbing on it, praying to it, and having faith in it. But if this genie doesn't appear in this lifetime, do not fret, because certainly when we die, he will appear and take us on a magic carpet ride up to heaven. The more we play the lottery or praise the Lord, the greater, so we perceive, our chances of winning. Our superstitious beliefs play a factor in just about every aspect of our lives. When we heal from ailments and diseases, despite the doctor's knowledge and expertise, we see Jesus as the one responsible for our recoveries. When we experience favorable outcomes in court, irrespective of our legal professional's advice and expertise, Jesus again gets the glory. It is our reverence for superstition that imagines our personified deities as the ones who wins wars and flies planes. Trained pilots with hundreds or thousands of hours of flight time are given no credit for safe landings in thunderstorms. When we pray and call out the names of mythological gods, we are no different than the pigeons turning in semicircles, thinking their actions are issuing the food or blessings in their lives. It is disingenuous to make fantastic claims that every one of our prayers are answered. Okay. Are all your prayers answered? Yes. All, all of them. All my prayers. If you prayed 100 prayers, all of them are answered. Yes. Now one never gets an answer. No. Okay. Superstition, disguised as religion, is leading the way and will continue to do so 
unless we recognize. When you believe in things you don't understand, and you stop Stay tuned for the next episode of Slave Sermons.